Hello, this is Scott Sparrow from Optics Realm. Today I wanted to talk about life cycle of a lens design process. Recently we had requirements come in for a family of lenses with different focal lengths and each focal length was assigned to a different lens designer and differences in how each of these lens designers approach the problem kind of highlighted differences in how a lens design can come together. And today, I, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. So, in particular, how long it takes, how much effort is required to get percent complete, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, here's a curve of percent complete of the lens design in the vertical axes. In the horizontal axis, we have time. And it's not a linear function. As you can see, it takes you a little while down here to actually digest the requirements and figure out what it is your customer wants. Once you start to understand, uh, you can progress quickly, and then you hit this knee in the curve, and then it takes you some time to get some manufacturer, you know, get the manufacturability down of the lens design. And I'll be going over these phases in detail. This assumes constant specifications what happens is your customer decides they want something different at some time say here and then you rapidly realize you've got to start back over and actually maybe I shouldn't even call, show this falling but it uh, it actually begins down here so the fun creative part of the design takes you know to get an 80 percent solution may take 20 percent of the time and you know I'm not I'm making that up but the majority of the work to get your solution takes place pretty fast compared to the total life cycle to get a design to production. So, and that, that happens, you get this knee in the curve. And when you get that knee in the curve, that's kind of when the design pain begins. Um, typically that knee in the curve happens when you get hard, you get the hard requirements such as focal length and packaging and you don't have a lot of the manufacturing quite done yet and you've got a lot of little extra work to do a bunch of tiny tweaks chase your tail a little bit so in the early design phase uh, you might you might spend your time just determining what the design form is it a double gauss is it a triplet is it a TMA how many elements are there where are the doublets where are the singlets placed and that takes place, you know, kind of before this early knee in the curve. Then the mid phase, and I, again, I'm making these phases up. There's no established routine, but you're you're spending your time doing the bulk of your lens design. You're hitting your first order of requirements, your focal length, your field of view, and you're balancing aberrations, color, astigmatism, spherical, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you kind of get to this point, this knee in the curve, and you can say, well. You know, I've hit all the requirements that the customer wants. And the reality is you've probably got an unmanufacturable design. It's not a pretty lens to look at. So then you spend a little bit of time, and that's this yellow area here, where you're making the design producible. You're making the design look beautiful. One of my lens design mentors, Dick Buckroder, used to say that a good lens design looks pretty meaning low ray angles of incidences, uh, lenses that look manufacturable. And you're going to spend this time here getting that lens to look that way. You're going to have, you know, some thickness to your edges. You know, it's not going to come to a point. Your diameter to thickness ratios are going to be less than 15 to 1. You're going to try and get low ray angles of incidence and low surface induced spherical aberration, which I'll be talking on on another video cast. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and tolerance this design. And you typically conclude this phase, this uh, design for manufacturing and assembly, you conclude this phase with a critical design review. Sometimes after you tolerance, you're going to find that it doesn't yield well. It, you don't get good MTF or good wavefront or whatever your top level requirement is, and you've got to start back at your initial design. Then when you're done with a critical design review, you're going to go build prototypes. And you might think you're done at that point. But inevitably, building prototypes is going to highlight shortcomings in your design. So you're going to have issues, and you're going to have to deal with those. Once you get the 
the prototypes build, then you, then begins the extremely painful process of small iterations. And these iterations are done with design modeling and sometimes hardware exper experimentation. And at this point, you may have released drawings. You've got to worry about updating drawing revisions and informing customers. And at this point, it becomes very expensive and time consuming to make these changes. You like to lessen the pain in this phase as much as possible. Now, let's talk about variations in these design cycles from lens designer to lens designer. And first of all, let's talk about the designer that's focused on production. So he's thinking out in this phase up here, like, you know, he starts out here with a set of requirements down at the origin, and he's really concerned about production. And he's this red line here, and I've got the, this so-called typical we've been discussing in the green line. But he's so focused out at the production and that he puts a bunch of constraints in as well as focal lengths, and his time to get an initial design takes a really, really long time. Now, that's kind of a, a, a drawback to approaching the lens design with this problem. But the, the upside is you may have a smaller, a smaller cycle time during making it manufacturable. So this designer is really focused on potential issues in production. Now let's call about let's talk about the innovative lens designer and an innovative I don't know what else to call it uh, but this designer gets to a solution really really fast they understand how to balance aberrations how many elements they need and they can get to a design solution really really fast so when you're doing a feasibility trade this is this is awesome the downside may be uh, if a lot of attention isn't paid to making it manufacturable you could be spending a lot more time getting it to manufacturing. Now that kind of concludes this section of the review and uh, if you have feedback go ahead and contact me on uh, my webpage opticsrealm.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.